parish church in Hawbrook, Derbyshire. I'm standing by the war memorial, but it's not the war memorial that uh, I'm interested in today. I'm uh, going to look for the grave of a particularly, uh, I think, unknown but rather notable gentleman as I buried him in the church. The grave that I'm looking for is that of a gentleman called William Leake, otherwise known as the Fighting Parson. And the reason he's known as the Fighting Parson, A, he was vicar here at Holbrook for 37 years, but before that he carried the colours of the 52nd Regiment of Foot at the Battle of Waterloo. Not only that, it's reported that the 52nd Regiment of Foot were the unit that finally routed the French on that fateful day back in June 1815. So, to me, he's quite an important person locally. So let's see if we can go and find his grave somewhere in this churchyard at Holbrook. So from the shade of a breezy yew tree, I'm going to make my way this way and start my search at the top end of the churchyard. It's very overgrown but there are a couple of graves that have obviously had some recent attention just here so be careful not to, uh, to tread on the graves and there's quite a tall stone here with a curb around it and what do you know it's Reverend William Leake look at that that headstone needs cleaning but I found him it's a shame the grave is in such a poor condition He's right on the edge of the boundary of the churchyard at what is the, the west end of the, uh, of the church property. The fighting parson. The loved incumbent of this parish, he carried the regimental colour of the 52nd Light Infantry at the Battle of Waterloo. June the 18th, 1815. Entered into rest June the 6th, 1879. And he was 81. Also buried with him is his, his wife, Mary Ann. And they were quite a well-connected family. And uh, I'll explain some of that back at home in uh, in the study where the wind's not quite so uh, strong but that's the final resting place of William Leake on what is quite a dull day there's also an epitaph at the base to his sister 
who was Jane Cox of Frygate, Derby, and I think she was related to the Dr. Cox who wrote the history of Derbyshire churches, but I will check that out. But I've got a feeling uh, that's who she was. And that's a glimpse of Holbrook Church. It's quite an unusual building, it doesn't really look like a church in many ways. I don't know a lot about it. Maybe that's something to, uh, to read up on as well at some point in the future. William Leake was born in 1797 on the Isle of Wight, the son of Samuel and Sophia Leake of Havant, Hampshire. One of his two brothers, a lieutenant in the Royal Navy, was killed in action in 1810. The other brother was Admiral Sir Henry Leake, KCB, who was also MP for Dover and later Lord of the Admiralty. His three sisters all married naval officers, two of whom became admirals so he was part of a military family. Against his mother's wishes, William joined the army in 1815 at the age of 17 and joined his regiment, the 52nd Light Infantry, commanded by another relative, Sir John Colborne, who later became Lord Seton, at Lassine, about five weeks before the Battle of Waterloo. One wonders what level of training could be given in such a short period of time. Throughout the day at Waterloo, he carried the colours of the regiment and came through the battle unhurt, whilst the officer who carried the King's colour, Ensign Nettles, was killed. Afterwards, William and the rest of his regiment marched to Paris and he subsequently served with the Army of Occupation in the north of France. He became increasingly of a religious persuasion and finally left the army in 1825 to take holy orders. He entered as a fellow commoner at Queen's College, Cambridge, gaining a BA in 1829 and an MA in 1832. Whilst he was at Cambridge, he took a leading part in establishing the Gownsman's Sunday School. Shortly after his time at Cambridge, he was ordained and took up a curacy in the south of England, before being granted the living of Brailsford, Derbyshire, where he stayed for eight years. In 1840, he was presented by William Evans Esquire MP to the living of Holbrook and he remained there as parish vicar until resigning in 1877 at the age of 79. He was also Rural Dean of Duffield from 1849. During his time in Holbrook he lived at Holbrook Hall which is situated just behind the church. In 1866 William Leake published a book entitled The History of Lord Seaton's Regiment, the 52nd Light Infantry, at the Battle of Waterloo. In this work, Lee had sought to right the wrong as he saw it that official accounts of the battle had cast upon the role of his regiment in finally routing the French Imperial Guard and effectively defeating Napoleon's army. He wrote, It is beginning to be more and more widely understood that very great injustice has been done to Lord Seaton. My only reason for thinking of writing these volumes was that I had always felt this injustice very strongly, and that, with other officers of the regiment, I thought, if it were possible, the truth with regard to what we knew the 52nd had achieved at Waterloo ought to see the light. He followed this first book with a supplement published in 1871, adding further weight to his argument and including the text of letters he had abstracted from various officers connected with the engagement. Credit had been given to the First Guards for delivering the final blow that caused 10,000 of Napoleon's most able and experienced soldiers to discard their packs and weapons and run for their lives from the Waterloo battlefield. Leake, however, claims that the First Guards were not in a position to mount an attack on the flank of the enemy and that it was the 52nd who pressed home the defeat on the Imperial Guard. He claimed that during a conversation between Sir John Bing, commanding First Guards, and Sir John Colborne, commanding 52nd Light Infantry, shortly after the battle, Bing had said to Colborne, How do you fellows like our getting the credit of doing what you did at Waterloo? 
I couldn't advance when you did, because all our ammunition had gone. Colburn had confided this to Leake, being a close relative and officer of the regiment. Leake also refutes that the Duke of Wellington ever uttered the phrase, up guards and at them. The Duke merely told the commanding officer of the 3rd Guards Battalion to form line on the front face of the square and drive those fellows in. William Leake was well qualified to recount these events. He carried the colours throughout the day of the battle and witnessed the most appalling of sights. One that he recalls is of discovering that about 18 inches of his colour pole was wet with blood near the level of his shoulder and his uniform was also covered in blood. At first he imagined he'd been wounded but couldn't feel any pain anywhere and he couldn't see any wound. He discovered the following day that his left thumb was bruised as well but couldn't remember anything that would account for this. He then recalled it being hit by the top of a comrade's skull as it flew through the air during an engagement with the enemy the previous day. This would also explain where the blood had come from. He was 17 years old and he had only been in the army for five weeks when this happened. He was the youngest ensign at the battle. During his civilian life, William Leake devoted a lot of time to agriculture and the breeding of cattle though he never allowed these pursuits to interfere with his work as a clergyman. His herd of shorthorns at Burniston won him several prizes at Derbyshire Agricultural Society shows. As a minister he was most earnest and devoted in his pastoral duties and his liberality among the poor was very great. The due observance of the Sabbath was for many years the great object of his life and he was much gratified when he proved to the County Agricultural Society by cheese produced from his own dairy that Sunday cheese making was unnecessary. His obituary in the Derby Mercury describes him as possessing in an eminent degree the polished manners of the old school. His dignified, courteous yet genial bearing was most refreshing to witness. Though abhorring everything evil he always took a most charitable view of the failings of others. William and Mary had married in 1828 and had four sons and four daughters. Two of their sons entered the church. Edward Tuckerleek became subdean of Lincoln Cathedral and John Coxleek was made Bishop of Woolwich in 1905. Henry Leek was a notable athlete competing in the throwing events for Cambridge University and an English amateur champion for the hammer throw. His son, Henry Allen Leake, represented Great Britain in the throwing events at the 1908 Summer Olympics. William and Mary's other son, Samuel, was a barrister at Lincoln's Inn. The Reverend William Leake, M.A., had had a remarkable and full life and he witnessed the brutal events of a decisive Napoleonic battle as well as the tranquil peace of a small country parish. One person said of William Leake, I do admire Leake, he is so consistent, he is what he professes to be, he carries out his principles into all he does. I don't like his religion, but I do like a man to practice what he preaches. There's no mistaking Leake, he's real and so thoroughly consistent. My feeling is that William Leake should be more widely known in our county and in particular in the immediate locality of Holbrook. I don't know whether he has any surviving descendants living locally or otherwise but if he has I do hope they will attend to his grave and ensure it gets a clean and tidy up before too long. I hope this short film will result in a wider interest being taken into the remarkable life of the Reverend William Leake, the Fighting Parson.